Well, welcome to this webinar. This webinar is proudly produced by RAM Training Services uh, for our students who are undertaking our um, Cert 4 in Training and Assessment. Now, this webinar will walk you through the design cluster, the design cluster projects, and essentially the purpose of the webinar is for you to be able to um, sit down with your assessment, follow along with this webinar and basically be able to answer everything. Okay, so I want to give you as much guidance as I can so that um, you know what to research, how to do it, how to fill in the forms. And I'm going to give you examples as we go through it. And essentially, if you're following along this webinar, there should be no questions that you have at the end of it. I mean, I'm going to give you as much as I can without spoon feeding you the answers, so to speak, if I can. All right. But uh, here at Ram Training Service, is we really want to support our students and uh, having said all of that, if you get stuck at any time, feel free to reach out, send us an email, give us a call, and we're more than happy to walk you through things, all right, or just um, give you some coaching over the phone, okay. So these webinars, uh, we've got a webinar for the short answer questions, we, we endeavor to have a webinar for um, pretty much every single aspect of the um, assessment workbooks that you work through, okay. In class, you're going to go over uh, certain components, and then these webinars are going to fill in the gaps, or if somebody is doing this course online, uh, they can pretty much watch these webinars in their entirety and pretty much complete the, pro the, pretty much complete the course, which is fantastic, okay. So, this webinar is going to focus on the design cluster, on the design cluster, okay? So uh, in front of you on my screen, you should uh, see uh, task 2.1. So starting at 2.1 and uh, we're starting on page 25, just after the short answer questions, okay? Uh, so I'm going to walk you through pretty much all of the projects. So as I do, make sure you've got a pad, pen, and you've got your assessment uh, nearby you when you've, and uh, feel free to fill things out. Feel free to, you know, pause and fill it out and then uh, press play again. Uh, but this webinar is really going to hold your hand as much as we humanly possibly can um, in, uh, and make it as close as possible as if you were in an actual training room with a trainer, okay? So uh, let's jump right into it, okay? So uh, task 2.1 here, we've got this um, case study with Julie Smithers um, in this real estate office scenario. Okay, and essentially 2.1, it's giving you a bit of a scenario and a bit of a context and background to the situation. So uh, Julie Smithers works in a real estate office as a receptionist. She decides she would like to become an administration assistant. At the moment, Julie is answering the phone and taking messages, but to ensure compliance with the organizational quality assurance policies and procedures, she will, she will need to learn a number of new skills before she's eligible to apply for a position as an admin assistant. Okay, so don't get too caught up in the actual scenario itself. Just know that it's a baseline or it's a um, simulated situation so that uh, we can uh, uh, help you have a, um, I guess, a context to be able to uh, provide you with, um, I guess, and a, um, a real world scenario so that you can apply the training design skills that we teach you. Okay, so a bit of a role play here. And the first thing that you're going to do is come up with three questions that you would ask Julie if you were doing a training needs analysis with her, okay? So questions like, and uh, so here are some examples that you could potentially use. Uh, you could use different ones, it's totally up to you. Um, and uh, feel free to use any of these or your own, it's totally fine, okay? But the outcome is that you have three questions so questions could be, um, Julie, what other qualifications have you studied in the past? Um, Julie, uh, why do you want to step into this new role of admin assistant? Um, Julie, um, what do you find is your biggest strength um, as a staff member it's, um, at this real estate office? It could be, Julie, what do you find is the most challenging thing to do at this real estate office? Um, Julie, uh, what new skills would you like to develop or brush up on? Okay, any kind of question is totally fine. Just imagine you were sitting down with Julie and asking her some questions that would give you some ideas as to what direction to take Julie in, in terms of her study. 
Okay. Now we've got uh, this section here, Julie's answer. So you could actually sit down with a friend and ask that friend these questions and that friend could provide you with some answers or you could just presuppose and make up what Julie's answers would be. Totally fine either way, okay? So once you've done that, come down, okay? Now, next task is um, review the outcomes of the training needs analysis, i.e. what uh, answers you got above. And based on the training needs analysis, identify and document two competencies Julie could complete to enhance her skills before moving into the new role or in, into her new role, okay? So what we often suggest is um, a great one to look at is maybe BSB, ADM, um, 405, um, organ uh, let me pop the title in here, okay? And we got organize meetings, okay? Now, this unit has been updated, okay? So if you put in um, this one, or if you put in the uh, more recent unit, that's totally fine, okay? Uh, we're not gonna be too fussed on that, okay? We're not gonna be fussed on spelling either, don't worry about that, okay? So um, another one that we often suggest that people do, um, if we think about uh, Julia's context, is maybe BSB. I'm not sure why it's coming up in red, but that's okay. BSB, CMM, um, 411, make, uh, ooh, my bad. Um, let me, let me fix that. All right, cool. Okay, make a pr uh, presentation. Okay. Now, let me just double check something. I just want to check that um, code that I've got that correctly. Um, yep, yeah, I've actually got that incorrect. Uh, let me just double check that. No, we're good, we're good. We are very good. All right, so I just want to double check that. All right, so we got BSB, CMM, 411, make a presentation. All right, awesome. So the two that uh, we're going to suggest that she starts out with, and that's going to help her develop her skills to become an admin assistant. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Those are good ones to put in your answer. All right, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Okay, so coming down. Okay, now we've got a bit of a training needs analysis, a bit of um, some results that uh, were discovered as we hypothetically analyzed her documents and uh, had our um, simulated conversation with Juliet, right? Okay, so we can read through this and um, we can discover that um, she's, uh, she's got some skills, um, like sales and customer service skills, um, limited life skills, okay? Not very self-motivated. Um, and we got some details here, okay? What skills do you believe would enhance your ability? All right, we read through it. It's got advanced Excel spreadsheets, okay? Advanced Word and formatting skills, time management, making presentations, understanding how to process financial transactions. All right, so that gives us a bit of an idea as to the kind of direction that um, she needs to go to in terms of her study, okay? And we're gonna read through her position description. Okay, it's gonna give us even more details about what uh, she needs to know. Okay, then we're going to come down to task 2.2a. List the training package that you would consider to be most appropriate for Julie. Okay, so as we've read through all these details, probably um, it would make sense that we would recommend the business services training package. Okay, now don't be too fussed at the fact that that's red. I'm just going to change that. Okay, all right. So, um, that code for that one is the BSB um, Business Services Training Package, okay? And um, as we go through this webinar, you may see me um, making mistakes or just um, uh, playing around with things or whatever it might be, but that's totally fine. Let's keep it um, authentic and original because you're going to experience these things as you go through your workbook, all right? And I'm going to be looking up some things on the internet. I'm going to maybe make some mistakes and that's totally fine, all right? Because I want you to know that... Um, if I try and make this all professional and make it perfect, you know, let's just keep it original. Let's just keep it um, like it would be you as well, making mistakes as you go along, right? I want you to see me clean up my mistakes as we go through, okay? So 
You got task 2.2b, referring to a scenario provided at the beginning of the task, provide one reason why Julie is required to undertake the suggested training. Okay, so you could say, um, uh, Julie, let's go black. Black's probably a better color. Okay, Julie would like to um, step into a new role of um, admin assistant. Mm, she currently feels like she needs to develop further skills to be able to blah, blah, blah. Okay. And you can fill that in, right? So it could be things like able to, um, able to de um, deliver presentations, um, organize financial transactions in the real estate office, um, develop more confidence to speak to customers. Uh, what else? Uh, create uh, better um, documents within the uh, real estate context, um, have more confidence to follow up on issues. It could be um, communicate better with staff members. It could be anything at all that comes to mind as you have reviewed the uh, training is analysis, position description, and anything that she's mentioned above. Okay. We're just looking for two or three things there. Okay. So coming down, um, we've got the scenario section B. So we're just continuing in this on. So um, probably what we recommend that you um, uh, how do we put this, that you suggest or recommend for Julie here. You got two choices. We got We got probably um, either, and um, let me just look this up for you. Okay. All right, so... Uh, let me come down. Okay. And just finding the one I want. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to share my other screen. Okay, so probably what we're going to recommend that she does is certificate three in business. So um, all I've done is I've got a, to training.gov.au and I've found the unit, uh, I've found the qualification BSB 30120 certificate three in business. All right, so if I scroll down, um, I have got a uh, total number of units. We've got 13, six core, seven electives, and you've got some uh, different specializations in there. So you've got the core units and then the elective units, right? Now, the other one that you could choose um, might be the certificate four, four in, in business. Okay, so certificate four in business, scrolling down, finding training.gov.au. Okay, and let me just close that. Okay, so you got BSB 40120, certificate four in business. All right, so coming down, we got total units, we got 12, six core, six elective. Okay, and we're all good to go. Now, whether you choose the set three or the set four, totally up to you. Um, it's mm, in her scenario and with Julie, if I'm completely honest, I'd probably go the cert three um, and start her, out, start her out at that. And if then if she was stepping into maybe an office manager role, um, you may then suggest the cert four. Okay, but that's just my personal opinion. If you pick the cert three or the four, it's going to be correct. Okay, um, there's no hard and fast correct answer on it. It's your opinion. Okay, in class, the trainer may suggest a particular one, and that's totally fine as well. Okay, so let's go back to our workbook. Okay, let's go back to our workbook. And as I do that, all right. So qualification, you would put in the code and um, then pop in a reason. So if I was answering this, I would put in, let me just grab that, I'd copy and I would paste that. 
Okay, Cert 3 in business. And the reason I might say that is um, this, oh, we got some red writing again. This is pretty cool. All right. All right. So um, this would be the most appropriate as it would um, give her uh, a broad range of admin and communication skills and would build her confidence for this level okay now that's just my opinion um you can come up with um your own answers that's totally fine all right now next we've got read and document the packaging rules okay so if i go back to my other link which is the um cert three in business um uh let's just share my screen again just so you guys can follow along all right so coming down got the packaging rules here so um if i was going to read and document the packaging rules i would just come here and i would probably just copy and paste that okay all right so um let me go back to my document all right so i just literally copy and paste that in all right and do it in black of course okay cool so that's done okay so now coming down we've got list the major units that Judy, julie should or needs to complete okay so what i would suggest that you do is in this section you're going to list the core units all right you're going to list the core units now Coming back to my other document, okay. So over here, all right, so we've got the core units. We've got these ones here. So if you are in class and uh, the teacher or the trainer says, write them in, well, you would just write them in. Um, if you were doing it electronically, then sure, absolutely. You could um, just copy it in. All right, so, okay. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that in and I'm gonna change it to black that's the way we do it all right so i've listed those in fantastic we are off and running folks all right now licensing requirements okay now i'm going to list the electives later on so don't worry about that so licensing requirements in there you could put there uh none required okay um for this qualification um however if she is working in the in the real estate industry, she may need her real estate license um, at a later stage if she wants to sell property. Okay, I've just added that in. You don't need to if you don't want to. Okay. Cool. All right, prerequisites. Um, let's go back to our document on training.gov.au. Let's check that out. All right. Is there any prerequisites? Um, so entry requirements, nil. All right. Licensing, it says no licensing. So I was correct in that. Um, so there are no prerequisites. So we are good to go on that. All right. So let's go back to our document. Okay, so prerequisites, you can put in nil. All right, explain the relationship between license requirements and the vector. So you could fit in an answer something like, prior to obtaining a license, uh, an individual may need to obtain a qualification. This can be the case for um, something like a real estate uh, license. It could also be the case in terms of a security license. If you wanted to work as a security guard, you need to have a security license. So what I suggest that you do is go to Google and type in the word license um, and vet requirements and see what comes up or license qualification requirements, okay? Uh, but uh, that should be enough explanation for that. Explain the role of a prerequisite in a qualification. So you could say a qualification, uh, sorry, a prerequisite is a unit that must be completed before starting a new unit or starting a particular qualification. 
Okay, so that's pretty much um, the extent of it. You could say a prerequisite is a unit that must be completed before starting a qualification. Okay, and a prerequisite gives the uh, background skills and knowledge that would be required uh, for that industry or for that context to be able to uh, complete the qualification or the next unit. Okay. So list the remaining units you've selected and give a reason for your choice, okay? So in here, we're going to list our electives, okay? We're going to list our electives. We're going to come back to this um, page here. And if we chose the Cert 3 in Business Admin, uh, we can see that uh, we need seven electives, okay? And uh, in Julie's case, my gut tells me that probably you'd want to go after the electives in the business admin or the customer, uh, customer engagement um, specialization. Okay, so you're going to come down here and you're going to pick how many electives? How many electives was it? Seven. All right. So you could pick them from the customer engagement or business admin. Um, that would kind of make sense. All right. Um, so you have customer and client engagement. Okay, um, so let's pick that one, maybe pick um, that one, maybe that one, uh, maybe that one, okay, maybe that one, okay, and hmm, now we need seven, okay, so we don't have to pick them all from that specialization. Um, Okay, and uh, we could certainly pick some other ones here. Um, she wants financial transactions. So uh, we may want to go with um, maintain financial records. That could be a good one. Provide financial transactions could be another good one. Um, I don't want you to get too hung up on uh, where you pick them. Ultimately, though, we need you to make sure that you come up with seven electives that would be appropriate and that would match her learning needs, if that makes sense. Okay. So you're going to list them in here. All right. So you're going to list the rest, the rest of the electives that you've chosen in here. Okay. Then you're going to put in a reason. So um, maybe let me give you an example. So let's come down and um, all right. Let me pick that one. Okay. And I will put that in there. And I would put um, uh, this would be uh, required in case she ever um, has to deal with complaints from renters or uh, um, people in the public that make complaints. Ballot. Okay, so we're just putting a very simple explanation uh, for each of the units, or you could put a overall explanation such as the above units uh, will cater for her training needs in regards to admin and communication skills. Okay, so you can put a reason for each of the units or you can put a reason um, that would summarize all of the units and why you chose them. Okay, so hopefully that's made sense. All you need to do is basically, as I said, um, uh, okay, so all you need to do is list the units there and um, you can put an overall statement such as um, the above units. Let me just type it in. The above units will uh, cater for her um, training needs in regards to um, admin skills and communication skills. Okay, so you can be very broad, or you can actually list the like list every unit and put the reason next to every unit. Okay, so part D, all you're doing is copying and pasting the units uh, from training.gov.au, okay? Come down and it says list one of the units that Julie's required to complete in order to equip her for the role of admin assistant, okay? So um, let's go with BSB CMM 411, make a presentation, 
Okay, now you can pick any of the units, that's totally fine. Um, for this question, uh, again, all we're doing is just picking one of the electives um, or even one of the core units and you're just um, listing it in here. Okay, then what we're doing is in here, um, what you want to do is write in, I like to suggest the elements. Okay, so if I come to um, training.gov, all right, so I'm going to come over here. Okay, and let me type in, um, let me type in, make a uh, presentation. Um, let's come down. All right, so if I calm down, all right, so we got the three elements here. All right, so. Beautiful. All right. So if we look, we got the three elements here. So we got prepare a presentation, deliver a presentation, um, review presentation. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over those elements into um, the boxes over there. All right. So, all right. So we've got, um, let me just move it over. So you got prepare a presentation. Let's pop it in black, black's a better color. Prepare presentation. Okay, deliver presentation. Uh, and review presentation. Okay, purpose of each component. Well, in here, we could put in a bit of a description about how we're going to tailor the um, training for her needs. So prepare a presentation. We could say, um, teach her um, the ability to, to prepare uh, presentations for her staff. Um, and for potential uh, renters in the future or buyers of property. Okay, now I'm just totally making this up based on the scenario that we've got. Um, and that's all good. It's all good, right? Whatever you put in here is all good. Delivery presentation. Um, it could be... Um, Uh, this will teach her to um, deliver presentations with confidence and engage her audience. Okay, cool. So review presentation. Um, this will teach her to um, strategically review her presentations. and um, evaluate her success. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna come down and now we're gonna look at the assessment requirements, okay? So, All right, so with this, um, the assessment requirements and major components, I'm going to tell you now that what we're looking to pop in there is the performance evidence. Uh, we're going to put in the knowledge evidence, and then we're going to put in the assessment conditions. Okay, and what we need to do is just simply come back to training.gov.au and All right, hopefully you can, yeah, awesome. Okay, so all we're going to do now is come back to here and make a bit of a summary of what we've got here. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. Okay, 
I'm going to come down to the knowledge evidence and I'm going to copy and paste that in there. Make it black. All right, cool. And the last of all, uh, let's copy and paste over those assessment conditions. All right, good. All right, awesome. So now let's focus on this document again. All right, so we've got 2.6. Review the position description, training needs analysis, and the packaging rules for the qualifications. Just two ways that the qualification selection will assist Julie in performing the role of admin assistant. So you could say, um, I chose the following um, two units um, specifically because All uh, right, so I just totally made that up. And um, all I want to illustrate to you is that um, this is one way to answer the question. So I chose the following two units specifically, and you would just list out the units, and then you put in your reason for choosing those units, okay? So uh, feel free to put in uh, the relevant reason, okay? So you're just choosing any two units uh, from the list that you've got up here. Where do we put it? All uh, right, cool. So from the core units um, or from the elective units that you've listed here. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so coming down. All right. Cool. So now we got task 2.7, referring once again to the position description. Um, so just one of the ways the unit BSB CMM411 could be contextualized to make it relevant for Julie's work role. So the unit BSB CMM is one that uh, we've been using a little bit up till now, um, which is the maker presentation units. Okay, so we could say if um, Julie was to undertake the uh, unit BSB CMM 411 uh, make a presentation. Um, this could be contextualized by um, teaching it through um, real life scenarios in which she might need to make presentations to about cool so it could be something like she needs to make presentations to future property buyers about buying a property or she needs to make presentations to um, staff at the staff meeting all right or she needs to make presentations um to her boss about new ideas or um, ways to make things better in the office, whatever it might be. Just think about in a real estate scenario, uh, admin assistant, what would she need to make presentations about? Um, and it could be very small context or very large context. Um, just put your thinking cap on and see what you come up with, okay? So coming down, all right, now, so you're about to develop a training program for Julie Smithers based on the scenario above, right? In preparation for this, list below. Okay, so the purpose of the training. So I'm not going to write this one in. I'll get you to have a think about it. But essentially, if we review all the things that have gone through up till now, the purpose of the training is really to upskill and empower Julie with skills, knowledge, and confidence to effectively work in an office environment uh, and accurately uh, record information, pass on information, um, speak politely to customers, and uh, basically be effective in her new role. Okay. So have a think about what I've just said there and craft it into your own words. Okay.
So the qualification product to be used as a benchmark for the training program. Now, again, you could put in the certificate three in business admin, or you could put in the certificate four in business. Either is totally fine. Okay. Now, when it comes to the LN requirement, we want you to think about in order to complete the certificate three in business admin um, or the certificate four in business, what kind of level would be required for each of these core skills? Okay. Now, um, in here, I'm going to put in a number and then a very broad explanation as to why I picked that number. Okay. So feel free to. Uh, duplicate or copy what I'm about to do. Um, otherwise, if you want to choose a different number, uh, that's totally fine as well, okay? At the end of the day, it's uh, not necessarily picking the perfect number. It's about you giving a good explanation as to why you pick that number, okay? So let's jump into it. So learning, um, let's go level three on this one. All right, let's go three. Okay, and I would say a three. Um, she needs the ability to um, create um, basic um, study schedules and um, and skills uh, for time management. Okay, cool. Reading. I might say three, and say in a real estate office she may need to read complex documents so um, level three would be required okay writing um, I might go a um, let's go high two um, mid three okay um, so she may need to record uh, meeting minutes and uh, discuss, uh, well, uh, discuss in written form um, complex items such as legal contracts, etc. Okay, these are just ideas that are coming to me as I'm thinking about what kind of things would she need to write in a office environment in a real estate context. Okay, oral communication, um, three to four. Okay, um, she may need to discuss um, complex issues with uh, customers and. Uh, and pass on uh, complicated information to real estate agents, okay? Um, so probably a three would be fine, um, but if she was a four, that would be ideal, okay? Numeracy. Uh, let's go a uh, two. To be honest, um, she's not going to be doing that much complex stuff. Um, she's not going to be calculating costs or things like that. You know, maybe she will. Maybe she won't. I don't know. But probably um, uh, a level two would be sufficient as she uh, would mostly be um, informing other people of information, not necessarily doing the calculations herself. Okay. Now I'm just throwing that idea out there. I don't know, but whatever you come up with is totally fine. As you remember, if you've gone through the language literacy and numeracy unit, there is um, the five core skills is learning, reading, writing, oral communication, and numeracy, and there's um, the levels um, for each of those. So there's one, two, three, four, or five, and five is the highest, one is the lowest. Okay. So characteristics of learner. So in here, we want you to think about Julie Smithers and we want you to think about, okay, what characteristics might she have? So maybe she is a single mom. Maybe she is a mature age learner. Maybe she is low, slow with technology. 
Or on the flip side, maybe she's um, rather young and maybe she's very good with technology. Maybe um, she's got outside work commitments, whatever it might be. All right. So we're just creating some scenarios or some, I guess, aspects to her, um, to her that we would need to factor in when we're planning our training. Okay. So possible impact. So if she um, is a single mom with three kids, maybe she needs to have a flexible schedule so that um, she can drop the kids off at uh, daycare, whatever it might be. Maybe um, if she's slow with technology, maybe she needs extra tutoring in order to be able to um, learn to use Microsoft Word. Um, and maybe uh, if she uh, is quite enthusiastic, motivated, pick things up really quickly, then maybe uh, you could focus more on role plays or you could uh, not have to worry too much about the technology side of things, all right? Totally up to the context that you create, okay? Another characteristic, maybe she's in a wheelchair and maybe you need to make sure that there's access to um, wheelchairs, okay? So all these different things that you can factor in Okay, so coming down. All right, so now let's look at the actual learning strategy itself. Okay, it's just another word for a big fancy document that will lay out how the entire qualification will be taught. Okay, so let's take a look at it. We've got RTO, so you can put in RAM training services. Uh, or if you want to put in uh, the name of another RTO that you know about, totally fine. Or even um, the name of the company that you work for, totally fine. Again, this is not a game stopper, okay? It's not one that um, is uh, critically important, but you need to fill in the box, obviously. So RTO, just put in the name of um, the RTO that um, comes to mind. We'd probably suggest RAM Training Services, all right? Provider number, um, you can either look our provider up on train.gov.au or you can just make up a number, totally fine. Qualification code and title. So in here, uh, if we go back to uh, training.gov.au, all right, so let me come back to this. All right, so you've got the cert four in business, you can put that one, or you could put the um, cert three in business, totally fine, either one that you go for, okay? Let's come back to the document. All right, so training package, that's probably gonna be um, BSB, yeah. okay? Then version number is going to be, um, let's see if I can find it. Yep. Just finding it. All right. So the training package includes this qualification. So we got um, business services training package. Then we got release. So you put that in. Okay. And let's come back to our document. Okay. We got release date. You're going to put that in. Okay, target group. This is where we're going to describe Julie in a little bit of detail. And we're going to say, Julie, um, as we put in some of the characteristics just up here. All right, so put those characteristics in here. And we will also say that Julie is a receptionist and she uh, is stepping into an admin assistant role as part of her um, career progression. She wants to uh, do further training. And these are her characteristics, okay? So learning needs, um, you could put in things like uh, communication skills, admin skills, ability to handle financial transactions, ability to make presentations, ability to handle payroll. You know, we're just gonna describe the key things that we're gonna focus on in the training. Okay, entry requirements. In there, you could put in nil or um, none required. Okay, prerequisites, nil, all right. Uh, Co-requisites, nil, RP, RPL, CT. Um, the way that I typically answer this is um, uh, RPL is not appropriate for um, this situation. However, if in discussion, 
discussions with the candidate. Um, she uh, does she re, um, how do I put it? She does um, have uh, work evidence that would be appropriate. Um, then RPL may be um, explored as an option for any of the suitable units. Okay, That's one way you can handle it, or you could just say RPL, CT, um, not appropriate, totally fine either way. Okay, Packaging rules. In here, again, we're going to go back to training.gov.au, and we're going to put in total units, equals blah okay so uh just so that you know what i'm talking about i'm going to come back here got cert three in business all right so i'm going to copy and paste this section here copy and i'm going to post um pop it into the document that we've been working on and i'll do that for you now just so that you know what i'm talking about okay so you can put that in Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put in the units that we've chosen. All right, so units of competency, if we come back, probably the easiest way to do this is instead of going back and forth to unit, come back up to this section up here. All right, so we list out the core units. All right, so we're going to copy and paste these core units. So copy, I'm going to come down here and we're going to pop those units in here. Let me see how I go. Yeah, it's, it gets messy when I copy and paste it that way. Uh, still, it's not what I want. Well, you get the picture anyway, right? So. Um, we're going to copy and paste it and um, we're going to fill it out. Okay, so you get the picture. So we're going to list out the core units here and then we're going to come up here and up here, we put in the electives, all right? So there may have been seven electives or six electives. What have we chose from training.gov.au, okay? And we're going to list out the rest of the electives, okay? So you're going to have a list of all the 12 units or the 13 units that you've got here. So you've got the unit code, unit name. You're just going to list out all of the units. Um, so all of the electives and all of the core, all right? So... Now we come down to outcome and exit points. So in here, you're going to put in um, at the end of the course, the um, student will receive a certificate three in business. Or you could say at the end of the course, the student will receive a certificate uh, four in business. Okay. So you're just going to literally write that in. At the end of the course, the student will receive a XYZ qualification. So coming down, outline of the program. So in here, you could say um, the program will continue over a period of um, six months or it'll go over a period of 12 months. And you could say, so let's go with that. So the, um, the program will continue over a period of six months. Now you could say 12 months, that's totally fine as well, all right? Um, it will consist of face-to-face um, -face workshops. Again, you can create your own answers. It's totally fine. These are just ideas, all right? Um, it will include, um, uh, let's go, independent study. Um, it will include uh, workplace projects. Um, it will include observation in the workplace. Okay. Um, 
And you can go into as much detail as you want here, totally fine, right? So you could say it will be, um, it will be um, one unit um, per two weeks, um, and it will be um, three face-to-face uh, -face workshops. I'm just totally making this up, and we're just basically designing a program. Okay, um, and you don't need to think overthink this too much. I'm just putting in some kind of outline of the program, and you may want to touch on the workshops or the uh, what's going to happen in the workplace, what's going to happen in terms of independent study. Um, so, go into as much detail or as little detail as you want for the outline of the program. Okay, but you want to be talking about the structure of what it's going to look like. Okay, so. Now, coming down, we've got schedule for classroom delivery and assessment. So what I like to do is um, say, in total, there will be um, X number of workshops, okay? So this could be, um, so you could put 20, you could put 30, you could put 50, totally fine, like whatever you're creating, all right? So, excuse me, um, workshop one, uh, and then you could put the 12th of, let's say, January 2021. Okay, workshop two. Okay, and you could put in uh, 12th of February uh, 2021. Okay, so all we're doing is we're going to list out the dates for all the workshops. Okay, so if you've got 20 workshops, then you would list out 20 dates. If you've got 10 workshops, you'd list out 10 workshops. Okay, and you're just going to put uh, dates to those workshops. We're looking for you to create a schedule and we're looking for you to pick some dates. That's all we're looking for you to do. So um, just so that you uh, catch the idea. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to list out all 10 or 20. I think you get the picture by now, all right? So you're just going to pick some dates. Doesn't matter when you pick, all right? But essentially, it's going to line up with the outline of the program. So if you said there's 20 workshops, then just list out 20 workshop dates. If you said there's 50, then list out 50. If, you list, um, if there's one workshop per week, then make sure that you list out dates that would align to whatever the outline of the program is, okay? So coming down, pre and post course requirements. So in here, you may say um, prior to each workshop, the uh, learner will be required to uh, read uh, particular chapters from the textbook to prepare her for the next unit. Um, and you could say between each workshop, there will be uh, workplace tasks and projects for her to complete. Okay, so facilities and equipment, training and assessment resources. In here, you could say, um, each, each workshop will require um, Wi-Fi, uh, what else? Um, tables, chairs, um, workplace documents, uh, whiteboard, flip chart, um, and catering. Okay, if I can spell that correctly. Okay, and you can list out anything at all that you would need in terms of facility equipment, training, and assessment resources. Okay, so evidence gathering methods, you could say um, observation in the workplace, um, verbal interviews. Um, you could say a written test. Um, you could say workplace evidence, okay, such as uh, Word documents, um, financial transaction records, uh, power 
PowerPoint presentations. Okay, all those kind of things. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to list the core and electives for the chosen qualification. So um, the easiest way to do this again is to come back up to um, this section here that we've listed them all out. And we're just going to copy them into this section here. So um, core, 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 elective, 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 right? Then you're going to tick the box as to, and now you can tick it or you can put a cross, it doesn't matter. So if we picked um, B, S, B, C, oh, let's um, do it the way we should. B, S, B, C, M, M, 411, make a presentation, okay? So all we're going to do is going to go through and we're going to choose um, if there's going to be post uh, pre-course work, workshop work, post-course work, or work-based work, okay? And is how we're going to deliver the content, okay? Now, you have, may have an X in every box. You may have an X in only two boxes, okay? It's totally fine how you decide it's going to be your mode of delivery, okay? But um, in this section, all we're going to do is list all of the electives, okay? Then we're going to uh, put a tick or a cross in the boxes, okay? So list them out and make sure that you list every um, core and elective for that qualification. So coming down, you're going to do it again, all right? And we got workshop, workshop excuse me, online blended or work-based training, okay? Now, these obviously need to align to what you've selected up here, okay? So if you put workshop for one of the units, then make sure that um, you have a cross or a tick for that same unit down here as well, okay? Then coming down, um, we're gonna put in the code, the title, and we're gonna select how we're going to assess that unit, all right? So whether it's gonna be questions, observation, activity, project, role play, scenario. Again, all we're doing is listing out the code and title of all the units for the qualification, okay? So coming down, we've got this part already filled out for you, okay? Coming down. Now, learner feedback in here, we're gonna put in uh, feedback uh, will be, Um, gathered from learners by online feedback forms um, using Survey Monkey, okay, or something to that effect. All right, training assessment staff. This is where you put in your name, okay, and TAS monitoring and continual improvement. In here, you can put the um, TAS. Let me make it black again. Okay, the TAS will be reviewed um, by uh, the Real Estate Office for Stakeholder Feedback. Okay. Uh, you could also put, and will be reviewed uh, following the course completion. Approval in here, you can put in um, uh, the name of um, your current manager, or you can put in the name of the person that works at real estate office as the manager. You can make up their name. That's totally fine. Date reviewed is um, put in the date that you're um, creating this. And then date for review, you put in um, the date in six months time. So if the program is going for six months, then put in the date six months into the future. All right. So that's that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a learning program plan for one of those units. We're going to make a learning program plan for one of those units. Okay. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to pick um, the unit um, organized meetings, okay? Now you can pick any of the units at all from the uh, qualification that you selected. Do you pick any of the electives or any of the cores where now want you to make a learning program plan for just one of those units, okay? So purpose of the learning program, let's jump into it. Um, to equip um, the learner with 
the skills to organize meetings. Okay, so um, learning outcomes um, by okay by the end of the program, uh, Julie will be able to um, do the following. So invite people to meetings, um, create agendas and send them out to people. Um, let's see, organize meeting space. Uh, what else we got? Um, All right, now, where did I get these from? Well, uh, two places. One, uh, because I read through the unit and I saw what was required, but also I'm just putting it into a real estate context and what she would be required to do, okay? So learning outcomes for that unit is essentially these things, all right? So target learner group, all we're going to do is con uh, continue our description of Julie, all right? Target learner group, that essentially comes from this space up here. All right, so target group, all you're gonna do is copy and paste what you put in there and you're going to put into into here. So it could be, um, Julie is a receptionist who's looking to step into an admin assistant role. Um, her characteristics are this, this, and this, and this, okay? So LN requirements. So it could be um, for this unit, um, the learner would require um, the following um, LN, um, okay? All right, so I'm going to put some scores next to this and I'm going to say learning, let's give her um, what would be required, probably a three for organizing meetings, reading, probably going to go a three, writing, maybe a three, oral, probably going to go a three and numeracy, I'm going to go a two. Okay, so very similar to what we had before. Okay, so venue logistics. All right, so in here, um, probably we're going to put in, um, let's put it in. Okay, so we got Wi-Fi, uh, we got maybe um, tables, chairs, we got, um, not Chris, um, we got chairs, we got um, parking, uh, maybe we need uh, laptops, um, maybe we need um, available room with good lighting. Okay, and all these different things, right? Essentially, uh, for running a workshop, what kind of logistics would you need? Okay, so coming down. All right, so unit code, um, BSB, ADM, uh, 405, organized meetings. Okay, and I think um, in our... Um, course materials that you receive from us. We even uh, provide this one for you. However, you can choose any other unit at all. It's totally fine. All right. So in here, we're going to dig how are we going to assess her for her ability to organize meetings. So probably uh, best choices are written questions and maybe observation and maybe even third party. Totally up to if you include that. Okay. Um, other, it could be a project, totally up to you if you include that. Okay. Now the resources, these resources relate to how you're going to assess. So probably resources you want to put in things like observation checklist, 
Um, maybe written test questions, um, assessor guide. Um, let's see, company templates. Um, what else may we need? We may need a laptop and we may need access to the internet, um, access to email and Word um, documents. Okay. All those kind of things. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Good things to put in. Okay. So coming down, we got the budget. Now, budget, again, totally up to you based on whatever you think is reasonable for the context. And um, so the way that we can handle this maybe is trainer. Maybe we could go with um, $2,000, okay? Now, this is just for the one unit. So um, it's just for the uh, workshop. Two thousand may be too much, too little. Um, totally up to you. I'm just picking a random number there. Um, we could go textbook, okay? We could go $200. Um, oh, maybe let's go 100. And we don't wanna uh, make the cost too expensive there for the learner. Uh, we could go um, catering. Uh, we could go maybe, maybe there is catering, maybe there isn't, totally up to you. All right, maybe we go certificate and maybe we go $20, whatever, okay? So you just wanna list two or three things um, and put in some costs there, okay? Again, whatever you put in, it's totally fine, totally up to you. But just make sure you mention the trainer, the textbook, and uh, the certificate. Okay. Um, WHS considerations in there put in something to the effect of the training um, and assessment area will be inspected for hazards and uh, risk control measures will be put in place. Uh, COVID, uh, COVID protocols will be followed as required. Okay, so recording in there, you can put uh, results will be recorded on the staff uh, HR file, uh, reporting, um, let's see, results will be reported on the uh, USI database. Okay, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, these are good things you can put in. Evaluation, um, the program will be evaluated uh, by uh, the Survey Monkey. Uh, feedback from the learner, okay, review, and you could put in a uh, program to uh, let me just fix the formatting be reviewed by stakeholder um, at the completion of the program. Okay, name in here, just put in your name, okay? Whatever your name is, okay? Then tick trainer, then tick assessor, then qualifications, probably best to put in TA40116. Um, and then probably because we have said that she's gonna study the Cert 3 or the Cert 4 in business, make sure that you put that one in there as well. So BSB uh, 40, whatever it was for the certificate three in business or the certificate four in business. So make sure that you include both, you include CAE and the other qualification that you said there, okay? So now we're gonna look at creating a plan for delivering the unit um, organized meetings, organized meetings, okay? So, what we need to make sure that we do is cover all of the space. So we've got this space here and this space here, okay? So um, we're going to put in session number one and we're gonna create some time for it. So let me do that, let me do that, okay. Now, 
let me bring up the unit. I'm going to um, go over to training.gov.au here and uh, let me bring up the unit or organize meanings. All right. Okay, so as I said earlier, it is superseded, but um, if you end up using this one or the later one, um, BSB OPS 405, either is fine, okay? So coming down, we have how many elements? We got three. We got make meeting arrangements, prepare and distribute documentation for meetings, record and produce meetings of minutes. Sorry, no, that's wrong completely. Record and produce minutes of meeting, okay? Let me learn to speak English. All right, so um, let me show you both screens. All right, awesome. Okay, so hopefully you can see both of my screens, all right? So in here on the time side of things, like, let's go, um, let's, uh, follow the example that we've got there. And we're going to put in a 1 to 5 p.m. Now, element name, I'm simply going to put in the name of the first element, which is make meeting arrangements. All right, so I'm going to put that in. Now, content, okay? So this relates to the performance criteria. So if we look over here, we got identify type of meeting, identify completely with legal requirements, identify requirements of the meeting and its participants, uh, make meeting arrangements and advise participants. So in here, probably what I'm going to list out is um, types of meetings. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Reasons to have a meeting. Okay, I'm going to come down here and um, meeting requirements and things to organize. Okay, then what else am I going to cover? Um, okay, maybe um, how to set up a room. Okay, then. Okay, adv advising participants on meeting details. Okay, then over here, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, well, how are we going to teach these? Okay, how are we going to teach it? Okay, so it could be um, class discussion and brainstorm. Okay. Um, and um, PowerPoint presentation, okay? Okay, then we got uh, reasons to have a meeting. So we could talk about um, let's go mix and match activity for that part. Okay, then we're going to come down here, meeting, uh, meeting requirements and things to organize. Or maybe this one we could do through a case, study, uh, case scenario or a case study. Okay, then we're coming down here, advising participants on meeting details. All right, so we could practice writing email to um, internal staff members regarding an up coming meeting. Okay, coming up here. All right, so now this section resources, what do we actually need in order to do these things? Okay, well, class discussion, well, probably we may need um, a whiteboard, um, we may need um, markers, we need our PowerPoint slides. Okay. So let me just make this black again. Okay, um, so we need the case study details. 
All right, practice writing email to internal staff. All right, well, um, we need um, internet, uh, internet access to, um, to company email um or notepad to write uh email on okay so what have we done we've given it a session number we've given it a time so 1 p.m to 5 p.m we put in the element name and then we put in the content. So where do we get these details from? We get it from the uh, performance criteria over here. And then we talk about, well, how are we actually gonna teach these things? And then the resource side of things is, well, what do we need in order to do this activity? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's do one more so you catch it. So we got S session two, okay. And then over here, we put the time one to five. Okay, in here, we're going to put the element name. Okay, and that is prepare and distribute uh, documents. Coming over here, um, we're now going to put in um, details that we're going to cover. So we've got prepare notice of meeting, check documentation, distribute documentation, prepare spare set of documents. Okay, so and this could be essentially if we chunked it all together, um, I would say it is um, reviewing uh, meeting uh, documents required for meetings. Um, and maybe it is uh, practice uh, making an agenda for a meeting. Okay. So in here, again, this section is, uh, well, how are we gonna teach it? Well, it could be review um, handout um, with class. Practice making agenda. Okay, well, we need a template for that, um, template for agenda. And uh, we also probably need some examples for um, student. Um, to refer to, okay. Okay, so what resources do we need? Well, we need the handout, okay. Template, we need the template and we need uh, the examples. Okay. All right, and uh, just for fun, I'll do the next one for you as well. One to five, okay. Okay, now I'm not going to do the rest of it. I think you get the picture um, by what we've gone through so far. So we've got our session numbers and then uh, we've looked over here at our unit of competency and uh, we've decided, okay, these are the main points and we're going to put them in there and then we're going to decide how we're going to assess, uh, how we're going to teach it and then what resources we would need for that. Okay, now, the key thing with this is you don't copy what I've done. You could certainly um, come up with your own ideas. That's totally fine. And you don't have to use the unit that I've suggested here, organized meetings. You could use a completely different unit, but I just want you to um, understand and get a feel for how we would fill out um, this document here, okay? So coming down, uh, make sure you fill out all of the boxes here, okay? So then when it comes to this section here, the elements or learning outcomes, um, all we're going to do is, for example, element number one, what was that? It was make meeting arrangements. All right, so we're going to copy, paste that in there. And we're going to tick the box, session one. All right, uh, number two. And... Number two, okay. Number three. Okay, number three. Okay, and then this page is done. All right, this page is done. 
Let me just tidy that up. Okay. So now you want to come down to the self-reflection and in here um essentially it doesn't matter too much whether you put yes or no's but we generally find most people put um yes for most of these things but then when it comes down to access and equity um people often put uh sorry people often put no for this one um simply because let me um uh, okay um essentially people will often say uh more details should included regarding reasonable adjustment or something to that effect right it doesn't matter uh how you fill out this form but it's just a way to review the program that you put together okay whether it's a yes or a no um it's no big game stopper so to speak okay so that is the task complete for that one okay so now we're going to come down to 2.11, the independent project. All right. Now let me just come back and focus just on that document. Okay. So essentially this independent project is now talking about a scenario where um, Julie now wants to become a real estate agent. She wants to become a real estate agent. Now, in order to do that, there are a number of units that Julie needs to complete um, in order to get her real estate license, okay? So what we've actually done is provided you the link to actually go and find those units of competency. So when you click on this link, it will actually take you to that. So um, here's one I prepared earlier, as I often say. All right, so let me just close these um, pages for you. Okay, so this is the actual site. So when you click on that link, um, it takes you to this page. Okay, so if you scroll down, it talks all about getting a real estate license. Okay, so now the property services training package, this is where it gives you the information. Um, and these are the units that you must have completed in order to do it, okay? Um, and then it, uh, these units of the above are only valid for eligibility of registration until 31st of December, 2021, or you can do these ones, okay? But if you um, take a look at this page, it lists the exact units that need to be mentioned as part of the program, okay? So you can pick the first lot, or the second lot, depending on when you are um, completing this qualification. Okay. So, what I even suggest is maybe uh, right click and uh, print this page so it's easily, um, so it's easy to refer to. Okay. So, now let's come back and let's look at this document again. Oh, let's look at our book. All right. So, the purpose of the learning program is you could say something to the effect of um, to up skill the learner in the ability to sell uh let's go list and sell property um so that she can uh, become a real estate agent okay learning outcomes so you could say in them uh to be able to um, list and sell property and uh, generate new business for herself and for the agency, okay? Um, she will need to learn how to negotiate with buyers and sellers and follow uh, property regulations. Okay, again, I'm just making these details up based on my limited knowledge about the real estate sector. Okay, so it lists out three or four outcomes in this section here. So unit code, if applicable, um, and title. So you're gonna list out the units that um, we found on that link. I'll show you one more time so that there's absolutely no confusion. All right, so you're going to list out these units, these units here, or the units up here, depending on the date that you're filling out this um, book, okay? All right, so let's come back to the book. 
Okay, so you're gonna list out the unit code and the title. Target learner group. Again, we're simply describing Julie. So it could be um, admin assistant stepping into a becoming a real estate agent. Um, she is a single mom with three kids. Just all those details that we've talked about up till now. Target learner group LN requirements. So in here, you could say uh, for this program, she, uh, oh, let's go, the learner would require um, the following levels of LN. So, let's ramp it up a bit for the numeracy because it's a little bit more technical when she becomes an agent. Um, let's go oral communication, let's go four. Writing, let's go four. Reading, let's go uh, potentially a four or a five. And learning, let's go four, okay? So she's gonna need to step her skills up a little bit, um, but because she's becoming an agent, um, the levels of responsibility and technical skills are a little bit higher. Okay, assessment pathways. Again, all we're doing is listing the code and the title, and then we're going to um, tick or put across in the units. All right, so all we're doing is repeating uh, what we've got up here. Okay, as in we're repeating the code and the title. So code and the title. Um, and then we're deciding how we're going to assess it. Okay, resources in here. It could be observation checklist. It could be... Um, documents, it could be contracts, it could be um, observation checklists, written tests, um, it could be project information. Any kind of resource that we're gonna need in order to train and assess this program related to um, the units that we've got that we've listed here, all right? So if, for example, um, list property for sale is one of the units, then the resource could be access to legislation in regards to, excuse me, uh, in regards to listing property, okay? Budget, again, um, think strategically, think about how many hours would it take to deliver all of these units? And maybe you're, tr you're paying your trainer, um, say a hundred bucks an hour, maybe there is nine units, so, Maybe um, in total, you've got say 90 hours. So that's 90 times 100 and you'd put that in. Okay, and you got resources. Um, so we've got trainer. So we've got trainer cost, you've got resources. Um, so when I say resource, I mean learning resources. So it could be textbook, um, whatever. And then we may have catering. Catering and anything else that comes to mind for um, resources. Oh, let's go certificate. Okay, and so you can cost those out, okay. WHS considerations, again, just like before, we could say um, training and assessment area to be inspected for hazards and COVID precautions to be followed. Evaluation, um, I think we said uh, program will be evaluated through SurveyMonkey, um, and I think that was it. Review, uh, review uh, meeting to be held with some um, stakeholders at the end of the program. Okay, name is put in your first name and last name. Tick trainer, tick assessor, qualifications put in TAE, and then uh, you may want to put in the cert for in property services. Okay, probably a good one, an appropriate one. Recording. Um, in there, um, you put in records to be kept on um, staff members HR file. Reporting, you could say uh, results to be results to be recorded on USI database. Okay, if you're not sure what that is, uh, when you enrolled in this course, you would have got a USI number. That's all we're essentially talking about, okay? Now, when we come down to here, what you're going to do is you're actually gonna pick one of the units um, from the list um, that we've got here. All right, so um, picking one of the units that you've named as one of the units that you're gonna teach, right? So we got um, one of the units from here or one of the units from there, okay? 
now let's go with um let's go with this one um sell property okay you pick any of the units at all it doesn't matter so i just um copied that posted that okay and i want to find that and i want to find the training the one on train.gov.au right so what have i done i've just um I've just picked any of these units and I've copied and pasted it and I've gone to training.gov.au, okay? And I've found the unit, sell property, okay? Now I'm gonna come down. Now this one has five elements, okay? Five elements, okay? So what I'm gonna do, um, now again, this, this is a moment where I'm gonna um, show you two screens at a time, okay? Hopefully you can see the two screens at a time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the name of the unit, um, which is, what was it? Um, let me just copy and paste it over. Copy and then paste it in. Okay, so we got sell property. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna come down here and how many elements do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five. So, you may have picked a totally different unit, totally fine. It doesn't matter what you, unit you pick. Whatever unit you pick, you put the um, unit uh, code and title in here, right? So your session number and title, session number one, all right? And then time, we can use um, the time that we used before, which is one to 5 p.m., okay? Okay, then we're gonna do a description. Now the description is just like we did last time. It's the, U, the element name, it's the element name. Okay. Now the content, just like last time, is going to be the performance criteria. Okay, the performance criteria. So, got to examine and apply legislative requirements and ethical standards related to the sale of a property, provide recommendations to vendor about property, verify that contract and supporting documents are available, identify potential risks to vendor, plan and um, facilitate property, um, record inspection details, discuss buyer feedback with vendor. Okay, so content over here, we may go, okay, so, uh, let's see, um, discussing uh, documents for uh, sale. What else might we do? Um, okay. Um, planning and inspection. What else could we do? Um, Uh, let's go, um, providing feedback to the vendor on the inspection. Again, as we're going through this, excuse the typos, excuse any of the, um, the red writing, whatever. Um, so this, um, and let's go discuss um by uh, feedback okay cool so now what we're looking to do now you can certainly have a lot more in session one totally up to you but activity type styles learners in here discussing documents for a sale so you could go um powerpoint presentation presentation um and class discussion okay and in here, planning and inspection, it could be a case study. And then providing fit, this could be a role play. All right. Okay. So then resources, well, we would need the PowerPoint. Um, you maybe need some markers for the whiteboard. Okay. A study, we probably need the case study details. Okay, role play, role play cards. 
Okay. Okay, so then what we want to do is uh, let's give that um, session um, a name so we could go, all right, planning the sale. Okay, then what we want to do is come down and we're going to do the second one. Okay, the second element is complete property sale by negotiation. All right, so let's come into here. Let's go number two. What time? Let's go one to five, one to 5 p.m. Okay, and uh, we're going to copy and paste that in. So complete property sale, the negotiation. And then we're going to put in the content. Where do we get the content from? Over here on the unit. All right, so we've got negotiate offer with buyer and vendor, confirm deposit, facilitate completion, complete the documentation as required. So we've got negotiate offer. So um, this could be negotiate, negotiate offer. Um, it could be, um, let's go, what else can we do? Um, confirming details, um, completing documentation. Okay, over here we could go, all right, that's a role play, maybe. Okay, and then, then um, over here, role, role play um, with buyer and vendor over the phone, et cetera. Um, this could be case study. Okay, then again over here. All right, well, what would you need? Role play cards. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's one word or two words. I don't know. See how we go on that one. Not too fast. All right. Case study, case study details. All right, cool. So then again, we're going to what else have we got? We got um, we got five elements here. So you got element three, four, and five. So you're going to plan those out as well. All right. So you can add more boxes if you want to. Um, but essentially, we need all these um, pages filled out. Okay. So then again, we're going to fill this out just very similar to what we did last time. And uh, let's go back to just focusing on the one screen. Okay. Now we got element number one. What was number element number one? We got um, prepare property for sale. All right, so prepare, prepare property for sale. And then we're gonna tick session one, okay? Element number two, what was that? That was um, complete property sale by negotiation. Complete, pro complete. Property sale by negotiation. And we're going to put in number two. Then we're going to put number three, number four, number five. And we're just going to tick the boxes as appropriate. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. If you're not sure, just go back to the one that we did previously. Okay. All right. So now self reflection. You know, go through and tick the boxes. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, as you reflect on these things. And again, uh, I often say to people, access and equity is often the biggest issue um, and reasonable adjustment is not talked about enough. So you can put no and then suggested comments. You can put in uh, more details should be mentioned about reasonable adjustment. Okay, and then coming down, we've got the last part here, which is um, assessment task 2.12, which is we simply ask you to go to um, these three websites. So you've got Small Print, Aspire Training and Consulting, RTO Materials, and find something that they sell that relates to one of the qualifications that you mentioned for Julie's scenario here. So uh, resources available, it could be... Um, uh, let's see, trainer guide for unit um, BSB ADM 405. Um, type of research conducted, it could be online. And then um, map to units, it could be yes, um, user friendly, yes, current, yes, relevant, yes, 
design. Maybe you don't like the design. Um, quality, good. All right, price is, um, let's say, $19. $19. Okay. Now, that's the extent of the answers that you need to put in for this section, right? So it could be um, assessment for um, unit BSB, ADM, 405, um, online. Okay, this could be no, could be no, could be yes, no, yes, no. It could be $25. Okay, and you would do um, this one here as well. Okay, now if you get stuck on this, um, don't overthink it too much. Essentially, the most important thing that we see is what's the resource that you are looking at or that you are mentioning. Type of research is going to be online no matter what. And then and this section here, yes or no, yes or no. Um, again, it's a tricky one because you may not even not be able to actually look at the resource. So if you're not sure, just put in a question mark or a yes or a no, and then we need to see a price, okay? If you're not sure about the exact company website, um, just make sure that you go to Google and type in small print learning resources and then push enter. Aspire training and consulting, learning resources, and see what comes up. RTO materials, um, learning resources, and push enter and see what comes up, okay? But that, folks, is the end of the projects for the design cluster, okay? So hopefully this webinar has been um, insightful and helpful. Again, you don't have to copy what I've said. You can put in your own answers, and my um, my guidance is only a guide, all right? Uh, feel free to watch this webinar multiple times. If you get stuck in any way, shape or form, just pause it, re-watch it. Um, otherwise, shoot us an email or give us a call or even better, post a question in the Facebook forum and uh, we'll be sure to reach out to you. So thanks so much for watching the webinar. Hope it's made sense and uh, very best of luck as you complete this assessment. That's all for this webinar. Thank you so much for listening.